Greetings today in the name of the Lord. I want you to grab a pen and paper because I got some strategic instructions for you. How do we take back things for the kingdom of God? Amen. It's called through warfare. So get that pen and paper and join me. Let's get renewed. Greetings. You know, I, I wanted to start today by rolling up my sleeves. You know why? Because I got a, something that's going to talk about today that, that requires us to roll up our sleeves a little bit. And, and it's about warfare. You know, spiritual warfare. So sometimes we have to roll our sleeves up a little bit if we're going to really get into it and, and, and realize the depths of this. Because uh, as a title I have today, it's called It's On Warfare. Because it's on. It's a battle that we're raging, and it's a fight that we're in. You know, and so I wanted to talk about it a little bit today. And I think as we do, you'll really get the understanding of saying, hey, you know, prayer is important. It's vital for us. It's vital as an individual for our communities, for our churches and all. We've been talking a lot about prayer in, uh, in our churches and we've been talking about it in conversation with people as I talk to other pastors and other ministers. We, we talk about prayer and, and how it's been important. And, and, and I believe that we're in a time and a season, especially in the church, that we're in a time and a season that, that prayer is to be in the forefront it's going to be the most important thing. I always said that prayer is the backbone of all that we do. But I don't want it just to be a backbone in my life today. I want it to be in the forefront. I want it to be the first thing I do before I move forward in anything else. I want it to be the first thing I do before I make a decision. I want it to be the first thing I do when I get up out of bed in the morning and, and start my day. And, and so, but I, I think we're in that season right now when it's especially a season of prayer and warfare and, 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 and we got to be in our homes praying. We got to be in our communities praying and our tribes and, and nations and, and, and even in the world as a whole, prayer ought to be in the forefront. We need to be praying to the Almighty God. How we need to be lifting up those prayers. I want us to go to the Bible today and we're going to look in some verses here and and, and you'll see the depths of prayer and, and the importance of it in our life and, and how it's a, a tool of warfare that God has given us. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19, it says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Now that verse right there, it has two, two ends of the scope, I say. It's, one end says, and we know that we are of God. Well, praise the Lord. Can I say that? Hallelujah. We are of God. You ought to shout with me on that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are of God. Man, that's a connection that we have. That's a force that we have. Amen. That, that is almighty God. He, he's on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's good. That's good. Look, but the second part of that verse, it said, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Now, what I want to do in 1 John 5 and 19 is break this verse down a little bit, and you'll see the importance of prayer here. You see the word lieth there, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The word lieth here, it's defined as prostrate. In other words, it's, it's just laid out flat is what it is. So the whole world now lieth, right? It's prostrate. Or, or the, the full understanding is like this. It's to be faced downward in subjection. So the, uh, this verse is the key in the revelation of why we are praying. Because it says the whole world lies prostrate, right? Face down in subjection. Now, I want you to see this here, because the world that we're talking about here, uh, uh, the world is this. It tells us that the world and everything pertaining to it, in other words, talking about uh, all the things that we would have in the world system today. We're not talking about heavenly things. We're talking about the natural things we see. So if the whole world lieth prostrate, what's it talking about here? The whole world, all of the world system, right? Everything pertaining to the world, like... Uh, uh, prosperity, prosperity in the earth, right? Uh, our health, it's a physical aspect of our body, keeps us strong, right? Keeps us moving forward. Uh, the wisdom, the wisdom that we have and that we gain through the knowledge of the earth and things that we do every day, 
that wisdom that we get in life itself. That's what it's talking about now. Remember, the whole world lieth. It's in subject to what? Lieth flat out. And how did it say it? The whole world lieth in wickedness. So it lies subject to here. It lieth there, not struggling, not wanting to rise up, but lies there prostrate under the influence of the wicked one. Okay. In other words, it lieth in wickedness. So that's the foundation that we're going to build off of today. And that's what I'm talking about. The world, all of the system pertaining to the world, it lieth there. It's prostrate out, not rising up, not struggling to get up. It lies there, what? Under the influence now of the wicked one. In other words, like this, uh, prosperity doesn't just come, does it? You got to work for it, right? Why? Because it lieth there under the influence of the wicked one. Now, that might sound hopeless to you today, but I'm not here to talk about doom and gloom. I'm here to stir up a gift on the inside of you that God has placed there. And, and, and just like we see in Timothy, matter of fact. So if God placed something on the inside of you, I want to stir that up today by ministering this word to you. Not about doom and gloom, but come on. It's about what? Rolling your sleeves up. Getting to warfare. Let's go to 2 Timothy real quick and look at this in first, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. In chapter 1, verse 5, we begin there, and it says this, When I call to remembrance, and this is Paul talking to Tim, uh, writing a letter to Timothy, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith. What is the unfeigned faith he's talking about here? He's talking about your sincere faith, the faith that you have, that sincere faith. He said, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned, the sincere faith, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also, wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Now I want you to understand this. The spirit that it's referring to here is not a spirit as in some Holy Spirit type situation or as some spirit being. This is referring to a disposition. So it's for God hath not given us the disposition of fear. You know, like, whoa, boy, that spirit in that person is, that, that's, a, that, that's tough, right? But it's not that type. It's the type of spirit that's a disposition. So for God has not given us the disposition of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. So you see what he's given us. We've not been, my, my personality, my disposition is not fear. Instead, it's power, love, sound mind. That's what God has given me. Let's keep reading in verse 8. He said, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which has given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, if you're watching or if you're listening to this today, then you have been called. It's your responsibility now. All right, You've been called, part of the elect of God. I want you to see that. I want you to grasp that for a minute. If you, can, if you can hear me today, you have been called by God, right? You're a part of the elect of God. So you have been called. You need just, I want you to do this. I want you to confess this with me real quick. I have been called. Say that with me. I have been called. I've been called. I've been called into the kingdom of God. I've been called into righteousness. I've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what I've been called to. Now, Paul called it a high calling in Christ Jesus. We see that. What is that calling? Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Remember, that's verse 9. According to his own purpose and grace. So I have been called to his purpose and to his grace. So that means His grace will be upon my life. God's divine influence upon my life. That's His grace. But see, we're not called to just sit back in the security of going to heaven. I, I tell you, it gets, in honesty, it gets frustrating sometimes when we look around and see Christians just sitting back, you know, not doing anything. We've been called. 
And the calling is not that we can just sit back in the security and wait till our day of going to heaven is here. I mean, I'm ready for that day. I'm excited about that day. But ultimately, we're called to get out and do something, right? To God's purpose. So what is God's purpose? You know what we're called to? We're called to take back dominion. Take back the dominion that God gave us in the original. When he created Adam and Eve, he told them, subdue the earth, take dominion, have authority over it. But they lost that power when sin crept in. But through Jesus Christ, a new way has been given us now. And the opportunity once again to take back that dominion. So no longer are the things of this world under the influence of the wicked, remember? But instead, they're under the influence of the kingdom of God. So it's our responsibility now, as called by God, to do what? Take back dominion. Take authority now. And to what? Bring the world that's under the influence of the enemy, under the influence of the kingdom of God. So, question is, where do we begin, right? How, how can we do that? How can we take this dominion and authority back? And Jesus gives us the key to that. You know, if you get into the Word, you'll find Jesus gives you a key to all of these things. And we're going to go to Mark chapter 3 and verse 27. And here we see a key to it. No man, it says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Okay, so if we're called to take back the kingdom, right? Out of the influence of the wicked one, and bring it under the influence of the kingdom of God. How can we do that? According to this verse, the first thing we have to do is bind the strong man before we can spoil his goods. So, think about this in your mind for just a minute here. In binding a strong man, as we see here in this verse, we can perceive that a struggle will ensue, right? Their warfare is going to take place. That's why I roll my sleeves up, because a battle's fixing to take place, right? In order to bind the strong man, there obviously is going to be what? A struggle, and a struggle will ensue in that. So let's look at another verse real quick. 2 Corinthians. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. It said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we walk in the flesh, but we don't war in the flesh. Do you see that? If we walk in the flesh, it's what we do, but he said we don't war in the flesh. Okay, so we're going to bind the strong man. It's going to be a struggle in Sioux, but we don't war in the flesh. How do we do that? Before we can even think about the weapons of warfare, right? We... We need, in order to take back dominion, there's a warfare and weapons. But in order to really think about them weapons, we've got to first picture the warfare. We have to understand the warfare part itself. What is that warfare? How do we go about it? It's not flesh and blood. We're seeing that. If our weapons of warfare are not carnal, then obviously it's pertaining to the flesh. Then obviously the warfare must be pertaining as well that it's not a fleshly battle either. So if the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, then my warfare must not be either. I can't use a, a, a fleshly weapon in a spiritual battle. I, I can't use a spiritual weapon in a fleshly battle sometimes. It, 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 we have to understand, if the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, then if my weapons aren't carnal, then my warfare must not be either. I want you to see that before we move on. In other words, I, I don't want to waste my time beating as the air, what? Beating in the, in the, in the a fight where I'm not accomplishing anything. First uh, Corinthians 9 and verse 26, we see that same reference where he said that. Look, I don't want to waste my time fighting in a realm that's not going to be successful. I don't want to fight in a natural realm if it's not a natural fight, right? I want to know that I'm accomplishing something. I don't want to waste energy and, and, and not be productive. Uh, do you? Do you want to fight as beating at the air? That's what we find Paul saying in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26. He said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. He said, look, I'm not one that just gets out there and fights as in beating the air. I don't want to do that. 
I want to know that my energy is being successful, that, that I'm not wasting it, that I'm being productive in the things that I do. So if we're talking about this battle now, this is where we're going, warfare, the weapons of our warfare, binding the strong man in order to what? Take the spoils. So if it's not a carnal battle, then it is a spiritual battle. It's the only options. If it's not a carnal battle, fleshly, then it must be a spiritual battle. And how do we fight spiritually? This is the key for us. How do we fight spiritually? We fight by praying. Our combat is prayer. Listen to me in this. All prayer is warfare. All prayer. Whenever you pray, it is warfare. Daniel's prayer is a great example we find uh, in the book of Daniel when he prayed. And the Bible tells us that he prayed for seven days, it says. And he, didn't, he hadn't received anything. No answers. No understanding. God wasn't revealing himself at all. But Daniel continued to pray every day. Every day he would pray. He'd open up his windows to the east. He would look out and he would pray every day. That prayer was warfare. Because when the angel does come unto Daniel, and the angel does begin to deliver unto him a message, what did he say? The angel said, look, the prince of Persia had held me back and was defeating me and was preventing me from coming. Do you see that? There was a battle raging. Every day Daniel would pray, these angels in heaven were battling. And, and it says that even to the point where Michael came, and Michael relieved him from the prince of Persia, and this angel was able to deliver the message unto Daniel. See that spiritual battle taking place as Daniel began to pray and continued in prayer. So see, when we aren't praying, then the evil one is winning by default. There's no warfare taking place. I'm going to say that again. When I said this at our church even, it, it, it broke the mentality that we had of saying, wait a minute, it's important that we pray, and we pray all the time. Because when we aren't praying, the evil one is winning by default. In other words, there's no warfare taking place. The enemy advances if there's no what? No pushing against it, right? Resistance. If there's no resistance, then the enemy's going to come in. That's what the Bible tells us, that we should, what? Resist the devil and he will flee. But there has to be a resistance. So when we're not resisting, the devil's automatically taking territory. Because there's no battle. There's no, no, no warfare taking place. I think maybe that's why we're instructed to pray without ceasing. Look, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, pray without ceasing. That's the words that they were given. Now, I don't believe that really means we just got to get on our face and, and 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, pray and do nothing else. I think it's keeping that constant communication with God in prayer and warfare. I think it's about uh, joining together with a body of believers, amen, and, and, and each one spending some time in prayer. I believe it's about the church having specific times of prayer and keeping a focus of prayer so that everywhere somebody's doing warfare. See, there's power in that. You know, my prayer is powerful. Your prayer is powerful. And if one could put a thousand, two could put ten thousand. So if at least just one of us is praying a day, then we're at least putting a thousand to flight. Think about it when we all come together, though. Oh, how a teamwork is accomplished and, and a warfare is won. Let, let's move on. See, we, we also see in the book of Acts, chapter 6, it said, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. See, the disciples saying, look, we're going to give ourselves to prayer and we're going to continue in this word. Why? Because we've got a warfare to do. We've got a battle to fight. We, we, we've got to take back territories. The, the whole earth lies in this subjection to wickedness and it's our responsibility to turn that over to the kingdom of God. And we do it by prayer. Oh, saints, we have been drafted by God into his army to turn the influence of this world back around to the kingdom of God. Oh, that's powerful. Just think about that. You know, we used to sing the song, I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army and you're in the Lord's army. And, and we're called, we were drafted by God not to sit back and just enjoy the peace of the Lord, although that's good sometimes and we need a rest, but, but our time of prayer and warfare is vital to what? Taking back that influence of the kingdom of God. 
Let's look at another verse. I, I just want to read it out to you here real quick. And, and I'm going to read it from a version that's called the Good News Bible, just because I love the way it spoke it. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, it said, As for you, my son, be strong through the grace that is ours in union with Christ. So what? Be strong through the grace, God's divine influence in our life, that is ours in union with Christ. So when we came into Christ Jesus, we received this what? This grace into our life. Verse 2, take the teachings that you heard me proclaim in the presence of many witnesses and entrust them to reliable people who will be able to teach also, who will teach others also. So he said, look, take this information that I'm giving you and teach others. That's what I ask you to do. Take this that you're getting today and, and teach other people. Share this word with them as well. Verse 3, take your part in suffering as a loyal soldier of Christ Jesus. Come on, now this suffering here isn't just about pain and agony, all right? It's about taking on the efforts, all right? It's about, you know, suffer the children to come unto me. He said, forbid them not here. It's about take your part in this, amen? Don't, don't forbid it. Take your part as the loyal soldier of Christ Jesus. Don't set it aside. Take the responsibility of it, it says. It said, take your part in suffering as a loyal soldier of Christ Jesus. Verse 4, a soldier on active duty. See that? A soldier on active duty wants to please his commanding officer and so does not get mixed up with the affairs of the civilian life. So do you see the understanding here is this? A soldier takes on that active duty. Why? Because he wants to please his commanding officer. He doesn't want the weights of the world to begin to uh, overcrowd his what? His duty. His active duty. So what is our active duty as a Christian today? Prayer. Everybody can do that. You know, some people might say, well, I, I can't preach or I can't teach very well. You know, I, I can't talk very good to people. But there's one thing every one of us can do and are called to do, and it's prayer. It's an important part of the warfare that we're doing. Remember, the enemy is winning by default if we're not praying. See, when we are praying, he's losing. He's losing because he has no defense for prayer. And when you use the weapons of warfare, the, the enemy is sure to lose. I, I just Let me share a few weapons with you real quick. The weapons of warfare are this. Number one is power in the blood. Oh, yes, there is power in the blood. See, when you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the blood shed of Jesus that established the covenant, it, it established the relationship. And, and, and with God, it, it gave us the way to have that relationship with God, and it established His promises in our life. So you know what? When you plead the blood of Jesus Christ when you pray, it's not about the words that we say. It's about establishing that covenant. It's about presenting that covenant. It's about sharing with the enemy, hey, I have a covenant with God here, and this covenant is about my healing. It's about my power that God has given me. It's about my promises, and I'm pleading that. It's, it's, here's another weapon for you when we ask in the name of Jesus. So when we pray, what? We pray in the name of Jesus. Once again, it's not about the words that we say. In other words, we're saying, look, I, I'm coming on behalf of Him. I stand in for Him. I stand as a representative of Almighty. I stand as a representative of Jesus today and in His, in His kingdom. You know what? Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. See, it's powerful. We pray in the name of Jesus. We stand firm in that, and, and, and we believe it. Why? Because we represent Him and His kingdom. And lastly, this last, uh, last little weapon I want to give you, and there's much more, but lastly, we use God's Word. When we use God's Word as we pray, this is how we bring back the influence of the kingdom of God. And we remove the influence of wickedness and together with prayer. You see, it, it's... Listen, devil, it's on. We are taking back the kingdom of God. We're taking it back by the blood of Jesus. We're taking it back in the name of Jesus. And we're taking it back with the word of God, which is our sword, the Bible tells us. It's the sword of the Spirit. So whatever it is you're facing today, come on, get on with us. God will bless you and touch your life. But I encourage you today, 
Take up the mighty armor of God. Amen. Get your sword out the word of God. And let's get it on with the devil. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are above and not beneath. We're the head and we're not the tail. Amen. And I want to encourage you today. In this battle, join with me. You're in the army of God, the elect of God. So let's get a hold of the kingdom of God. Let's take back the influence of this world for the kingdom of God. Let's take a moment and pray. I just believe that God will empower you today so much. And let's trust God. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We praise you for your blessings and your power, God, that you have given us. I pray, Lord, that you'll help us to take on this warfare, God, to take it on it with strength, Lord, and with power and with might that you've given us. And Lord, that you'll take it on with authority, that you'll give us the authority that we need, Father, for we represent you and your kingdom today. In the mighty name of Jesus, empower each and every one of us, Father, to fight the battle, to fight the battle, God, that you've called us to. Let's warfare. Let's take back for the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's take back the kingdom of God today. Let's bring the influence that this world has under the kingdom of God. Amen. And I know God will bless you for that. So join with me if you will. Will you make an agreement with me today that we're going to take on prayer? We're going to take on warfare. We're going to take on the devil for mighty is the God that's in us. He's powerful, quick, and sharp. Praise God. Have you ever been praying for a circumstance or situation and not seem to get results? You have all the ingredients to get the job done. Maybe you just need to mix it up. This powerful message by Rev. Donnie Hartzog will teach you how to take all your spiritual ingredients and mix them with your faith for a blessed end result. For any donation of $10 or more, we will send a copy of this message. Write to us or go to our website today for your copy. Hey Amen. I hope this word has blessed you as much as it's blessed me. And I encourage you, meet us back here next time on Renewed.